Are you going to stick around St. Louis for a yeah, while? Yeah, went back to the old stomping grounds at Finney's MMA. That's where everything started, you know, back in uh, 2012, 2013. Holy shit. Joaquin Buckley is fighting Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. That's massive. That's huge. This is the biggest fight of his career. Good for him. Buckley's really fighting Wonder Boy. That's insane. That's insane. Also, why is everyone hating on Buckley now? He's done nothing but take risks and has put on excellent performances. So I'm just like, I like Buckley's chances in this fight, honestly. Do you guys think that this is going to be Wonder Boy's last fight? I don't know. It seems like he still has a lot of juice left in him. I don't know if he's one of those fighters that's going to want to retire on a win or if he's going to want to stop before, you know, it gets bad like he seems like the type of fighter that once he gets knocked out will probably want to look for an exit but he's not easy to finish that's the thing about wonder boy like he's not super consistent but god he's freaking good like skill wise i mean he's one of the highest skilled fighters in the ufc i think i mean wonder boy really only fights once or twice a year too so he's not taking damage over he's not like tony you know he's not gonna be like tony he's not i think he'll probably lose to joaquin buckley and then maybe they'll give him like a gimme fight and he'll win and retire i don't know that's what i would that would be if i was the ufc that would be my path for wonder boy be okay fight buckley i'm sorry but i think he's gonna lose to buckley joaquin is on a mission Okay, I, I don't see anything getting in his way. Buckley has a very inspiring story, and I wish that people got that more. And maybe they will, you know, when he's done fighting. I think they will. I think people will look back on his career and realize, you know, how inspiring that really was. Moving on to the main event of UFC 307, Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree. A lot of people are saying that Khalil Roundtree doesn't deserve this title fight. And I would probably agree. But at the same time, what are the requirements to deserve a title fight? Because it's starting to really get confusing. I have no idea what the UFC wants when they're deciding who is going to be next for the title. And here's the thing, though. I know Khalil Roundtree is only ranked number eight. But I think skill-wise and experience-wise, I think he matches up really well with Alex Pereira. So I really don't care. I mean, I think at this point, the UFC, the direction that they're going, I think they're, the rankings just aren't as important in, as they used to be because this is an entertainment business. And I've explained this before. And just the direction that the UFC is going, they want finishes, they want action, they want entertainment, they want to sell tickets. So they are not always going to abide by the rankings if that is the case. Because if they were to abide by the rankings, we would have Alex Pereira versus Magomed Ankalaev, and that is not a super marketable fight. Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree. Khalil Roundtree is a Muay Thai specialist. He trains at Syndicate MMA under coach John Wood. If you aren't familiar, John Wood has coached some people who have been winning a lot lately. He's now coaching Marab Dwalishvili. Syndicate MMA is on fire right now. Evan Elder just got a huge win. He recently started training at Syndicate MMA. Khalil Roundtree has been training at Syndicate MMA. He also has trained in Thailand. He has insanely wicked Muay Thai. He definitely deserves to be there. But I understand why people are a little confused with the rankings, and I am too. And it's not. Here's the thing. You can be frustrated with things that the UFC does without taking it out on the fighter. You know, like this is a UFC issue. This don't blame Khalil for getting the opportunity of a lifetime. Of course he's going to take it. Why wouldn't you? This is like when people were talking about Steve Ursig. And then look how he performed in that title fight. And then look how he performed against Kai Carr France. Maybe he's a title fighter. 
Like some of these fighters, they don't excel when they are put in low level environments. They only excel on high level stakes. So that's why sometimes you see a different version of a fighter come out when they're in a title fight or when they're in a, you know, a big opportunity, a big stage. I think Khalil Roundtree absolutely deserves to be in there with Alex Pereira, but I do think this is a huge mistake by the UFC because if Khalil Roundtree knocks him out or wins in any fashion, then they no longer have their biggest star. So it's going to take some time to rebuild that. And is Alex Pereira going to want to rebuild that? You know, he has all the momentum in the world, all the hype in the world right now. This, to me, would be the perfect time to book Alex Pereira versus John Jones. But I know the UFC isn't going to do that. So Magomed Ankalaev, honestly, is even more of a nightmare for Alex Pereira. I actually think that Ankalaev and Khalil Roundtree both have what it takes to defeat Alex Pereira. I think that Alex Pereira has had some favorable matchups, and I do think he is very talented. His power is insane. It doesn't matter who you put in front of him. That power is unreal. There is nothing like it. But I will say that when he meets someone like Ankalaev or even Khalil Roundtree, who I know a lot of people aren't familiar with yet, but when you see what this guy can do, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Because... They are going to push Alex Pereira in ways that he has not been pushed yet. Ankalaev would be a very frustrating opponent for Alex Pereira because he's not very easy to hit. He's not somebody that you're going to knock out in the first round. Magomed Ankalaev has only been finished one time, and it was a submission by Paul Craig. He's had extremely unlucky circumstances in a lot of his fights. I thought he won the fight against Jan Blahovich. I thought he should have gotten the belt, but nope. Didn't get it. And then Jamal Hill ended up fighting 43-year-old Glover Teixeira to win the title. And I love Jamal Hill. I think Jamal Hill is an extremely talented mixed martial artist. I think he's more talented than people think. I don't think his full skill set has been on display. But I do think that Ankalaev should have been the champion. Yeah, I think Ankalaev and Khalil Roundtree are two of the most dangerous guys in the 205 division right now. I think that we will see either one of them as champion uh, by the end of the year. But yeah, what John Wood's doing over there with Syndicate MMA is absolutely incredible. It's a really nice gym. I have visited there. It's state-of-the-art. Obviously, he has Khalil Roundtree, Evan Elder, like I mentioned. Marab Dvalishvili trains there now. Brandon Jenkins, he's been doing really well in karate combat. Zhang Wei Li recently won her title fight at UFC 300. And there are a lot more that I could name, but... Yeah, it, he's, he's killing it right now. Him and Joanne run that gym, and Joanne is a retired UFC fighter as well. So obviously having her there has got to be profoundly impactful on these fighters, just her experience and knowledge. And for those who don't know, Evan Elder, he is coming off of a huge win over Darius Flowers, and he is also from St. Louis, where I'm from. So want to show him some support and another fighter from st louis dakota bush recently got a huge win in nemesis fighting alliance i noticed he was a fighter that i had on my podcast for his previous fight and that fight he ended up winning by unanimous decision his goal was to get back into the ufc but kind of what the general consensus was was that he was probably going to need a finish in order to get that contract so he did get a finish I haven't watched any of the interviews that he's done or anything since then so I haven't really been involved much with the local scene just because I have other things I'm working on right now but um, but I did want to mention that because I do think he should be signed to the UFC immediately. I don't I don't even think he needs to go to contender series. I think that he just keeps showing everyone like hey I, I can do this and it's like he belongs in the UFC he's already been in the UFC he doesn't need to fight in any more local shows he doesn't need to fight in regional shows like that is a waste of time I thought this fight was a waste of time I thought he should have been signed already my frustration with the UFC right now is that they want only finishes from these local guys I'm gonna warn the UFC of the problem with wanting just finishes is promoters are going to be encouraged to book mismatched fights. And they are going to try to find the easiest knockout win, the easiest submission win for their guy. And so I think 
that the UFC should be very wary of that and do the research on the opponent and make sure that they're making a good decision. And that's the reason why I said before that he should just be signed to the UFC now. He only fights people with a winning record. Everyone he's fought has been legit. If they don't sign him, they're insane. So let's talk about contender series. Mansoor Abdul Malik ended up getting a huge win, a huge finish. The one that stood out to me the most the first episode of contender series was Kavanaugh. I thought Kavanaugh made a huge statement and I think he is going to be a star. I think he has just kind of an aura to him that kind of reminds me of like when Peyton Talbot was on and Sean O'Malley. Like he kind of has that vibe. So my prediction is that Kavanaugh is going to be the biggest star um, from this group of contender series from the first episode. But I was also really impressed with Bruno Lopez and Jose Delgado as well. Cortavius Romius ended up getting a huge win, and I know he didn't get a finish, but still got a win. I mean, the first time he went on contender series, he got knocked out. So for him to bounce back from that, go on contender series again, take a huge risk, put himself out there, and then ended up getting a win that's really inspiring, and I think that that is going to motivate a lot of people, and I think it's really cool. I think it's just awesome to see, so congratulations to Cortavius Romius. And then Cody Haddon, he has insane power, but he's also really talented everywhere, so I'm excited about him too. And I think the fighter that I'm most excited for from this episode of Contender Series is actually Gustafson. I think he just has a really kind of scary vibe to him that is really interesting and marketable I think that you know there are different types of fighters in the UFC like there's fighters that are like more of like the tough guy brawler there's the martial artist the purist like there's different styles and I think it's fun to have different personalities so I think his personality is going to mix in really well with the UFC and he has insane power too so I'm really excited. Kuniev, I actually was really impressed with him too. And heavyweight is kind of a different game. So I don't feel like you can criticize it the same way as like a bantamweight fight or a lightweight fight. It's a completely different game. So I think that that performance was actually really impressive. And his power is unreal. I mean, if the UFC gets a heavyweight that is talented... They need to sign them. People love watching heavyweight fights. I'm telling you. I know people think they're boring. And yeah, I, nobody wants to watch a Shamil Gazeev fight night. But so I also think that they should do a women's only contender series. I think they should split it up the first half of the year. Maybe spring do the men's. And then I think maybe like fall do the women's contender series. I think that would be really interesting. I think that would bring a lot of new attention and new fans to the sport. Since they brought the blue gloves for Contender Series, I think it would be really cool if they did pink gloves for women's. And I know that's kind of like, okay, we get it. You know, like not everything needs to be pink, it's, but it's marketing, guys. It's just to bring exposure to women's MMA. And sometimes you need to lean into certain things in order to bring that attention to the sport. And so I think that would be just a very simple and subtle way to kind of market women's MMA is things like that. Um, allowing the fighters to kind of express themselves a little bit more, I think would be good because women are very creative and expressive. And I think it's important for us to be able to like choose our fight shorts. And I think that women's MMA would be really cool if the female fighters were just able to express their creativity a little bit more. I think that would be fun. I don't know. I just think it would be really cool to have like a women's only space in the UFC where, you know, we don't have to worry about the guys and what they, what they think about it and what they say about it and what they think of the commentators. I think they should have an all-female commentary team, kind of similar to like what they have going on at Invicta but more specific to the UFC. So, you know, I think the UFC could take a lot of talent from Invicta, move it through the Women's Contender Series, and then create stars that way. I think that's how you create women's stars. I think that um, right now is the time to capitalize on this because there are a lot of women getting into martial arts. There's a lot of women competing in kickboxing, Muay Thai. There's a lot of women that are starting to compete in boxing, 
There's women that are starting to compete in jujitsu. So, you know, there's there's girls that are in high school that are doing wrestling. Think about skateboarding. Skateboarding used to be a male dominated sport. And then they started marketing women in a creative way. And female skateboarders are now starting to get more exposure than male skateboarders. So I think that the UFC would be wise to capitalize on the opportunity with women's combat sports right now. I think there are a lot of young girls out there that are looking for a female version of Max Holloway, a female version of Dustin Poirier, a female version of Alex Pereira. You know, that's what they want. And I think the only way to create that is to build it. I don't think that it's going to be created out of thin air. I think that you have to build it. So I don't remember exactly what they said they were doing with the Apex, but I heard that they were closing it for a certain period of time. I don't know. I saw on the website that they're renting it out. What I think they should do with the Apex is that they should create basically a hub for the fighters, kind of similar to the UFC Performance Institute, but think of it more as like a media outlet, like a media... um, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I guess like a media hub, a marketing hub, something like that. A place that they can go to create content. I think that would be really important. And they could even have like where you bring your own photographer, you bring your own camera guy, you do it yourself, whatever. You can do it however you want. Or they have their own in-house camera people to help create content for fighters. I think that would be really cool because a lot of fighters don't want to create content in their gym. They want to focus on training when they're in the gym. So if they have a place that they can go to create content in Las Vegas, like a place like the Apex where they have the small octagon so they can do fun, creative content in there. They can create a podcast room where they can start a podcast and they can rent it out you know, and make it part of their deal. You know, hey, this is a benefit of being a UFC fighter. You get to use this facility just like the Performance Institute. And I don't know. This is just an idea. I don't know how all this stuff works. This is this all sounds fun in theory, but when it comes down to actually implementing it, it's probably way more complicated than I'm making it seem. But it's just an idea of something that would help fighters and something that would give them a little bit of an edge and set you apart from the competition because guess what if you can create ways for fighters to create their own content and market themselves that is a lot less marketing that you have to do as a corporation so if you can encourage the fighters to do it themselves because they are their own business but you give them the tools and resources to do it I think you would see a big jump in momentum for a lot of these fighters. You could even have people there at scheduled times during the day to do interviews and they could sign up to do an interview. Say, hey, you know, do you need some exposure for your upcoming fight? You know, Ashley is available from 6 to 8 p.m. on Tuesday to do an interview if you need exposure. So things like that to where it's not journalists chasing fighters, it's fighters choosing journalists to do interviews. I saved the worst for last. At least Kai Car France got a win. You know what? Give Kai Car France the title shot because I didn't think he was going to win that fight. I thought Steve Ursag was going to destroy him and he proved me wrong. So, you know what? Just give him the title shot. I don't even care. Makayev and Manel Kopp had one of the worst fights I've ever seen. So you just give it to Kai Car France. He deserves it. So just like I predicted, Tai Tuivasa lost to Jarzinho Rosenstrick. Whichever judge scored that fight for Tai Tuivasa needs to be studied in a laboratory. I think that Dan Hooker should be next for the BMF title. And I know this might be a little bit of a controversial take because I've seen a lot of people say that they want to see him fight Charles Oliveira. But I think Charles Oliveira should fight Gamrot, and I think that Dan Hooker should fight Max Holloway. So I think we're just going to have to see what happens. But I think that Oliveira should fight Gamrot, and I think that Dan Hooker possibly should be next for the BMF title. The tattoos, the blonde hair, it's perfect. I think this is going to be a Dan Hooker's time to shine. And I think that... The, his career, just his entire body of work, he's only shown that he can endure the toughest opponents. He can he can hang in there when, you know, I mean, they fed him Michael Chandler with Michael Chandler's debut, which was a big deal. 
You know, they he's been the nail a lot. And it's cool to see him starting to become the hammer because he is so tough. He is so durable. And I've been saying this for years. And I just think that that is what the UFC wants right now. They want they don't necessarily care about winning as much as they used to, I don't think. I think that they care more about fighters being marketable, being entertaining, and putting on impressive performances. I don't think they care as much about them winning every single fight. Because Makayev was winning every single fight, and look what happened to him. So it's not all about winning. I think that UFC fighters need to have a more well-rounded skill set. And when I say that, I'm not talking about their martial arts skill set. I'm talking about their skill set as a human being. The UFC is just looking for other skills besides just fighting. Do you know who I think could be a star next is Carlos Pratis. The cigarette is great. The cigarette is amazing. I love that he has marketed himself by just smoking a cigarette. And that's like his shtick. Why don't we just bring back cigarettes? Vaping is so lame. Be an adult. Anyways. Yeah, I'm really sad about Adesanya. Hopefully he takes some time off and doesn't take another really difficult fight. But I think that Drickus is... Here's the thing, Drickus' fighting style doesn't look pretty, but it works really well. So it's really confusing and it's really hard to predict his fights because he looks different in every fight too. So it's like, that's his game though. I think that's his game. I think Drickus' game is the fact that he's unpredictable. Are they gonna give Sean Strickland his rematch? Robert Whitaker has a case too for getting a title shot. And what was up with Brendan Allen? These fighters are crazy. It's kind of fun though. Well, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for hanging out with me.